Okay, so those of you that know me know that my preferred method of playing PC VR is wireless, and as a matter of fact, I've been doing basically nothing else throughout the last few months. I've got other headsets that would take great advantage of wired PC VR with massive FOVs and high refresh rates, but I still jump to wireless. I've become accustomed to the fact that I can turn around, and I can spin around, and I can jump without being tangled in wires. It's that complete and utter freedom that keeps bringing me back to wireless. But wireless is flawed. You see, wireless has something that wired VR doesn't most times, and that is latency. But since I'm here and I'm playing it, I'd say I've gotten that quite a bit under control. And that's probably why hundreds of you guys keep asking me, what does my network setup look like and how can you bring yours down to a minimum? So what is up everyone, I'm Mystical, and today I'll be doing something that uh, I don't really want to do because of the absolute mess that it is. I'll be showing you guys through my network setup. So let's jump right in. First things first, this is by no means a perfect network setup. People buy dedicated routers for their wireless PC VR gaming so that they can connect directly to that and then connect directly to the PC. This definitely minimizes latency. However, I didn't want to do that. I don't have enough sockets as is, and I don't want to be connecting another router to my already pretty congested network setup. I say it's congested, but at the same time, I'm playing wireless PC VR, so what gives? Well, I'm here to show you that you might not actually need a dedicated router. And no, I'm not hotspot from my PC and connecting to that. It's actually much easier. Throughout the years, my network setup has gone through hundreds of changes, and hundreds would actually be an underestimation. This house is built in a very funny way where the Wi-Fi basically never reaches my room. My room is made out of some weird brick or something where the Wi-Fi just will not penetrate it. So let's begin at the very beginning. This is my Netgear R7000, by no means a new router whatsoever. This thing is actually quite old, and I have a video from the past on exactly how I modded it. You see, this thing is running Advanced Tomato. For those of you that have no idea what Advanced Tomato is, it's a custom router firmware that allows you a lot more freedom and customizability than a default router firmware would. By no means is this important, as this router actually doesn't do anything. I know, kind of funny. All this does is it collects the network data from my ISP and brings it on to the rest of the network. It's not even running in bridge mode. I have the username and password from my ISP allowing me to completely remove their router. But basically every other feature except for cut through forwarding and a few other things are disabled on this router. Even Wi-Fi is disabled. And that is simply because the Wi-Fi on this router actually isn't that fantastic. So then we've got an ethernet cable going from that router out through a hole in my wall and up into my attic. And then that same cable goes in through the attic into my room in that corner. Then from there, it goes into a networking switch. This is a gigabit switch, as I have gigabit internet, and I wanted that gigabit internet all around the house. From there on out, that switch also splits the wires into another switch, because <laughs> you know, one wasn't enough. From there, it goes into my PC, it goes into the NAS, it goes into the PS4, it goes into my brother's computer, and most importantly for you guys, it goes in to my access point. As if you ask me, I think the only thing you actually need for good wireless PC VR is a good access point. You don't need a good router. You see, a router has to do two things. It has to collect the network data and translate it into internet, and then it also has to send out Wi-Fi signals. Which, don't get me wrong, there's routers that do both of these things really, really well. However, an access point only does one. It sends out your Wi-Fi. That's it. It doesn't have to do anything else. And therefore, it is really, really good at doing that one thing. Thing. I've got a Unify access point, and this is by no means the best access point you can get, but it was a very good one back when I got it in the day. It's the Unify APLR, which stands for long range. Therefore, it reaches every single room in my house. It is also a gigabit access point, as I wanted that gigabit internet coming from the switch. It is also PoE powered, which means power over ethernet, which means it only has one wire going into it. As well as the fact that it can be mounted on my ceiling, it's perfect. The only thing that I would change about this, if I could, is by the newer version, with Wi-Fi 6, as this only does Wi-Fi 5. The Wi-Fi 6 one would give you even better results with a headset that supports it. And that is basically my network setup. The access point connects directly to any device I want it to be connected to and sends out the internet data from there. And if I'm using it locally, the data goes directly from my headset to the access point and then 
to my computer, which is fantastic. And because these access points are of the higher end kind, they do their job really, really well. Let's do a speed test on my phone right now for me to show you what I mean. And of course it has five gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. And right now my phone for some reason is on 2.4 gigahertz. So let me disconnect and connect again. And now we're on five gigahertz. But watch the results be absolutely terrible now that I'm recording. So here we go. These are my speeds. We're getting about 400 and 30 it's going up 450 460 460 so currently 460 and if i run it again it'll probably go higher because that usually happens there we go we were at 500 for a second oh, i have this funny thing where if i restart my router that thing actually jumps to one gigabit it's really weird i don't get it but it's okay because your wi-fi speed actually doesn't matter here yeah all of this is an epic prank you don't need good internet in order to have a good wireless pc vr experience in fact you can have internet at speeds of like 20 megabits and if you have a good access point you will still have an amazing wireless PC VR experience. You can have terrible internet coming into your house, but if you have a good local network, that is all that matters. Because your Quest, when it connects through wireless PC VR, doesn't connect to the internet. It connects to your computer locally inside your house. It doesn't actually leave your house. And to kind of visualize that for you a little bit, we're gonna run a ping test. A ping test shows you how long it takes the data from a given device to reach a given server. So we're gonna ping an external server first, google.com. So we type ping google.com and we can see it comes back with about 17, 18, 19 milliseconds. That is how long it takes my computer to reach Google servers. And now we're going to ping an internal IP address, which let's say is my NAS. So ping 192.168.2.211. If I am correct, this is internal. It's all wired through ethernet, meaning there should be a direct link and a result of under one millisecond. And there we go the time of connection in is less than one millisecond. So hopefully that makes it a little bit easier to understand. So the TLDR here, for those of you that don't feel like watching all that mumbo jumbo and don't care for the explanation, is your external internet speeds do not matter. What matters is your internal network. The device is connected inside your house and how good your access point or your router really is. Now, the singular most important thing that I would mention here is five gigahertz. Having 5 gigahertz greatly benefits the performance of wireless PC VR. So if your built-in router does not have 5 gigahertz, definitely do get yourself either a nice access point or a better wireless router. And that's pretty much it. If you don't care for the explanation, that's how simple it is. So there you guys go. This was a nice, simple video. I hope I didn't overcomplicate it, but everything about this setup is incredibly overcomplicated and it has gotten more messy and messy throughout the years. There's basically the minimal amount of cable management here, and I know that I'm going to get roasted for that in the comment section, but it works and that's all I care about. Since it went through so many changes, I just couldn't be bothered to cable management it after a certain time. You may have also noticed that my latency wasn't perfect throughout this video, and that is also why we didn't focus on the actual gaming PC part of latency, and we instead focused on network latency, as I don't actually have the hardware part down just yet. But if you look at the network latency throughout this video, you'll see that it is pretty consistently below 10. It does have spikes from time to time, but most of the time it stays below that 10 mark. But yeah, you guys asked for it, so here it is. Hopefully this helps some of you out. That's going to be it for today's video. If you liked it, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess the button works too, but let me know why down below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord down below, check out our Reddit. I want to see you posting your spicy memes on there. And thank you so, so much to all the Patreons supporting this channel. You guys are helping me out a ton right now, and I cannot explain to you enough how much that means to me. So thank you so, so much. And as usual, if you want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, dig my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.